Hello, uh, my name is Daniel Chobano. Uh, a short question before, how many of you have been to the Middle East? Okay. Uh, so my first encounter with the Middle East was uh, the plane landed, a short story. Uh, the plane landed, I uh, was going to the bus, and uh, the hit stood, uh, struck me. So while going to the bus, uh, I felt the uh, heat from uh, from Middle East. Uh, I thought first, my first thought was that it was from the engine, from the plane's engine, while moving, while going for the bus. And uh, the further I went to the bus, I realized that that is actually the baseline of temperature in Middle East. So it was, uh, I thought in that moment that I was in hell for a few seconds. So that was my first encounter. Um, so I, this is a little bit about myself. I'm the co-founder of Cyberplay Defense. I have some publications, but nothing very interesting about who I am. Uh, why I selected Middle East? Um, we are present in, the, in this market for quite a long time. Uh, we had a lot of engagements in Middle East. Uh, and we think, or I think, we understand their culture a little bit, at least, trying. Um, today we will talk about um, the current cybersecurity landscape uh, from the Middle East part. I will give some examples of on-site engagement that we have, uh, some services that were de demanded, some niche services that we saw, and the need of them in that region. Um, and in the end we will talk about also some cases of investigations and uh, some social engineering exercises that we did during on-site. So, the cybersecurity landscape. Well, as I told you, it's very hot. Very, very hot. Uh, it's the, the market there is developing very fast. Uh, companies from the Middle East depend very much on the outsourcing skills from other people from all around the world. Uh, from the Europeans' part, they feel very good. They see Middle East Europeans as very professional, being very professional in that region. Um, some of the bad news for Europeans is that no alcohol or limited alcohol. Um, increasing demand of cybersecurity professional, uh, since they are doing a lot of uh, outsourcing, um, they are taking people from all around the world, India, Pakistan, and uh, eventually Europeans. Um, local companies usually work with uh, local companies, so you must be there or having a subsidiary there in order to work with the companies, the companies there, or the government only works with local companies. But I think this is also for other countries where they most likely engage with local companies. The majority of the employees are foreigners, at least in IT, but then again, I saw this in the construction industry, so any other industry there. Uh, the locals are usually having high positions, at least in UAE and Qatar. Um, they usually for, go for the high positions. Um, very innovative, uh, for example, ITM in banking, telephone system, high tech infrastructure. Uh, Qatar has had the first uh, 5G implementation for commercial use. Um, and they are security conscious. So, um, I will give some examples of uh, on-site engagements in the past few months that I had. Uh, does anybody know what an ITM is? Okay. So, an ITM is the succe uh, successor of uh, ATM. It's like interactive teller machine. Um, you actually, you, if you have uh, some transaction, you, could, you don't go anymore in the bank and talk with the support there. Okay, I want to draw money or I want to open an account, I want to transfer from Estonians or any other type of operation. Now you have a phone, you pick it up, and uh, you're discussing with someone on, on the other side, supporting uh, on the bank side, um, uh, depending on the operation that you, are, you want to do. So technically, you don't need banks anymore, you have an ATM, you discuss with it, everything is very interactive. Um, you don't use the buttons anymore, so they scan you for the iris, for example, the fingerprinting, the facial recognition, so you have all this in place. Um, 
so it's like better security. So there is no pick, I wasn't there. So I have to check. So this was in the first day of the SS1. So we managed to play some solitaire in the same day. So we have some install cover for the security operating system. And during the um, last day of our session, so I was with uh, one of our consultants, uh, we managed to get uh, rich, or at least we thought that we were rich. Uh, this was done at 11 p.m. on the night last day, uh, and we managed to try to give a POC to the client that uh, you could withdraw money without the interact without the operation of the teller from behind the screen. So actually, you could give the direct commands to the ATM to the dispenser and give money out as you wish, as you want. Uh, the tricky part was to open the ATM. So this was a proof of concept. Okay, someone can use a USB, can insert it and withdraw money. Okay, but how can someone insert it with me, right? Okay, we close it. Mark. Sorry for that. Okay, locked. Can you can you check again? Good. Break it. Okay, halfway done. And it's done. So it's a 20 second video. So after this you can insert an USB and play along. Play solid there. Okay. So, what other type of assessment we had? We had the uh, NTLS, if you're familiar with the concept. Uh, we had NTLS um, network assessments. Uh, this was done on site on a telecom company, also from a company from Middle East. So, NTLS is used usually for telecom companies, for um, VPN wise uh, companies uh, that provide, that wants to provide faster routing. Uh, so it's from one node to another, faster routing, um, by labeling each package. IPTV, uh, you're familiar with the concept? Yeah, so IPTV is technically internet protocol TV, so it's TV over IP. It's like Netflix, but with also with like, like TV. It's uh, very simple. So usually they have an IPTV um, has the function such as video on demand. So again, as a Netflix, you want to pay for a video, you have it, it's unicasting, it's not multicasting, it's a single channel. Uh, usually when you want to watch a video, you pay for it, you have different methods of payment. Uh, for example, you have invoicing, so the billing will be at the end, uh, at the end of the month, or by sending SMS, to so pay with your uh, phone number. Uh, so here we managed to bypass all the method of payment. We pay also with someone else's phone number. So it was from a brute force technique, very simple. We don't have, didn't have any local mechanic in place. So you receive a pin code on your uh, mobile, and you put that uh, you put the phone number and the pin code you see on your phone. And if you brute force all the combinations, there are ten thousand combinations. You will enter eventually in the account of the phone number that you put in and someone else will pay for your video. Encrypted storage, not downloadable. So they had a, an HDB in this a set of box. So as a, when you have an uh, IPTV, you have also a set of box which uh, decodes all the traffic because everything is encrypted. But when, if you want, you can also store it for uh, viewing it later. And it was supposed to be encrypted, but actually you could Actually, download all the all the videos on our hard drive, and you could watch them all of them. There was no encryption in place. The only encryption was on set of which was on client side. Let me skip that one. So here, uh, using a simple technique such as you will see this in uh, web penetration testing, uh, changing the ID. Uh, it's very common as an access control uh, bypass. Uh, for example, if you watch uh, the first image from the right, you will see the play button. 
we intersect, we intersected that request, we changed the idea so we can remove it that we didn't have in our portfolio. And in the second image, you will see that it's playing uh, MailChimp, that movie, but the labeling says that a Merry Christmas in the day. So it's actually not a movie playing it. So you could, you could do this with open movies the other way. You don't mind anything. They have an external USB CMS admin panel, unauthorized access. So from here, you could upload your own movies, you could put a uh, live feed, you could add the um, ads to the movies from this CML panel, CMS panel. So just everything is uh, external for external use. You also have the mobile applications. Uh, the interesting part here was that you, each device, STD device, had uh, an S and serial number. Those serial numbers are incremental. In, if you want to log in with uh, using your mobile application, you will insert your uh, serial number, which you will find on the back of your device, and the password, which was generated by the TV itself. Uh, the, password, the password was generated using uh, a JavaScript, which, from which we found out by intercepting all the requests, and uh, the JavaScript uh, had an algorithm uh, had an algorithm in it, which created the password. So we went with the debugger, and we saw in the algorithm that they only use the serial number, the MAC address of the device, because you know they are incremental all of them, because are one after another uh, when making uh, the development phase. So we could create as many passwords for as many serial uh, numbers that we want. So actually, we had all the accounts for all the mobile applications. So for one mobile application. But that's why you see here the screen. So these are different accounts, almost incremental. So we'll talk about Active Directory and efficient testing engagements. Uh, we usually, during an efficient testing of Active Directories, uh, we usually have SOC uh, up and running, so we don't have any white listing while we are on site. SOC usually is not, is, uh, not notified. Or uh, during our performance. Uh, in these exercises, we must evade the SOC and all the security measures that are in place. Uh, usually, the client will want to measure the effectiveness of the SOC people, the uh, SOC team, and also to, uh, the final, uh, let's say, goal we need to access the critical business server or servers and dump all the hashes of, of, of all the users. Security measures that are in place usually are SOC, endpoint protection, Symantec, McAfee, Firewall, firewalls, you'll see a lot of them. Uh, next next generation solutions, Cisco IS you will see in most corporations, uh, just to identify on the network. And um, big corporations and those who invest uh, in security will have anti APT security solutions. Mistakes uh, that we saw in Active Directory implementation will, will be role seg segmentation of accounts. So usually you have an Active Directory account, admin account, and you log into your workstation. Uh, you log into servers. You log into usually do all the maintenance as an IT uh, using that account, that specific account. Uh, having this, uh, you it makes life easier for a penetration tester because it's. That being the final goal to achieve the uh, having an account and dumping all the hashes from the domain controller, uh, he is only the penetration test will only seek to find uh, workstations or servers that uh, is known to have an uh, active domain account uh, for an admin stored in that uh, specific location. So here we have mini tests, memory dumping, and all that, which gives us uh, the uh, the hash or the player text password, depending very much. Um, what we saw, what we are seeing also, a via Cisco VoIP device on the network with Mac whitelisting. Uh, white so this means um, they don't have LDAP integration, so they must whitelist the MAC address in order to access the, the network. So by spoofing that MAC address, so we have, you usually see this in the conferences, you'll, you'll spoof the MAC address and you'll have internet access without any 
which is called VIP or something. Uh, we also saw endpoint protection uh, uninstallers on workstations, usually on admins. Uh, IT guys who want who are doing maintenance tasks in the QT want to uninstall some software or uh, uninstall the endpoint protection. They have this uninstaller in their PC, so we are after that when we are doing penetration testing engagements. Jump, jump servers we do not uh, see very often. Uh, so, uh, jump server is a server which, uh, for example, for an admin, you are not connected directly to the domain server. You are connecting to a server which is more secure, and then from that server only you can connect to the domain controller. We are not seeing this uh, very often. Usually, the domain takeover will take a few days, and the rest of the assessment, for example, you will do this engagement, you will do this vulnerability uh, scan to the network and uh, try to recover as much as possible from the assets that are within the network. Trainings uh, are very welcome, uh, well embraced, uh, practical ones, or, uh, as we all want pra more practical than being theoretical. Uh, so they are very engaging in awareness training when we present social engineering. Uh, we discuss with them. We them, we put exercises along, so they are very open for this. Some IoT projects, STBox, STBox, Nokia module, ATM or ITMs, depending, uh, ONTs, these are some of uh, the IoT projects that we have. Niche demanded services. So penetration testing, which everybody is doing it, rating assessment, which kind of, it's like a fancy word added to sell more penetration testing. Purple team, uh, you're familiar with the concept? Purple team, how many? Okay, so we'll discuss further the purple team. Um, it's like actually purple team is like taking, you have a team of great, team, great uh, offensive guys. You're taking one defensive guy, put it in the offensive team, and you have a purple team. And you sell it twice, as price. Okay. So, or you're taking one offensive guy, you put it in the defensive team, you have a purple team. Again, sell it twice the price. Uh, so, this is the concept. You must know the defensive and the offensive side in order to be a purple team. Uh, okay, social engineering. Well, everybody is doing that. Dark web monitoring. Um, usually, we saw this on big corporations where they want to have their assets monitored on the dark web. So, uh, real-time monitoring, they don't want to have unknown breaches, uh, their IPs to be used as proxies or compromised, so they are doing this type of service, or they are requesting this type of service. Uh, threat intelligence for brand monitoring. So, uh, as the name implies, it's like um, there are services around this, and you are having, for example, you have Google.com. You want to know that uh, nobody is talking bad things about google.com, on different social media, on forums, or uh, something that can compromise your image, your brand. IT assessment, yeah, the embedded devices actually is very, uh, start to be very demanded in the region, and CBEST intelligence bit testing. CBEST, uh, you know the concept of it? Okay, let's take it one by one. So the purple team, so we have red team, purple team, and blue team. Red team is Offensive side, blue team is defensive security, and purple team is a combination between the bo between both. Very interesting concept. It's fairly new. But you cannot go to the customer. Hey, I'm doing purple team. I have a red team guy and a defensive guy. Let's let's sell it as purple team. It's, uh, this will be mostly done internally. So you are building a team of purples. <coughs> dark web monitoring. So as we talked earlier, so it's like a service. You are on the dark web and you are searching for all the forums, known forums. You must be in the different communities uh, to access uh, uh, different secret forums. Uh, for okay, black markets. Yes, you must know the breaches where you are here. Firstly, maybe if it's a breach, you for example, if it's Google breach, right? It's now it appears on the black market. 
you you can sometimes but not very little. Maybe you can buy it, see exactly if that's actually uh, a breach that happened or is a false positive. So it's there. Maybe there is that intelligent that monitoring. See the picture, okay? So have, for example, it's an open ticket from past being someone discussed about a specific customer. So it's a, you can have scrapers uh, on different forums. You can have uh, you can build your own software in order to do as much as uh, scraping as possible for the, the dark web and the, the public internet that you are having. Just and search for uh, keywords that men, that are meaningful to the customer such as the name, the brand, maybe the assets, maybe many things. The name of the seal. So no. <clears throat> okay, and for the CBEST, so CBEST identifies two things. It's like, a, it has a component of penetration testing, but um, on top of that, in the first phases, you will see a threat intelligence <coughs> phase. That means you, are have, um, you have someone specialized in knowing exactly what are your threats, what are your threat actors that can target your company. Such as, for example, if I'm a bank, probably my main concern won't be a 14-year-old good guy who is sitting in his bedroom trying to hack the bank. No, probably my concern would be, uh, if analysis could be done right, uh, Iran has some problems now with the US exports. Uh, and some actors from there uh, try to attack some banks in the past when this happened. So probably this will be our main threat actor. So uh, what it actually done here is you will receive in the first phases, you'll see some uh, real key scenarios that must be then applied in a penetration testing phase. Such as, uh, if, for example, a hacking group from Iran will use uh, social engineering techniques and then use the rate and engagement be very offensive or be very light. So we, we will do this in the penetration testing phase exactly. You will receive the, um, uh, exactly what will be the threat actors, the threat scenarios, and the penetration testing team will implement that accordingly. Be very more precise on the, uh, on the company itself, on the threats of the companies that they face. So. So the rules is the first phase of the uh, base initial phase. So we have the engagement. The scoping, the procurement, the CBS threat intelligence phase, where uh, during the few uh, in ter uh, during the few weeks uh, you will have um, you will gather as much as intel as possible politically and more, uh, and you will uh, create threat scenarios that are valid for that specific customer. And only in phase three you will have penetration testing. Uh, CBS started in the UK, it's a framework, uh, it's for financial institutions. So I think it's a world leading framework for intelligent risk and efficient testing for systematically critical organizations who stand to benefit from an trusted approach. Uh, it's made by a bank, uh, it's used by banks, usually by financial institutions. Okay, and some certifications that were Requested, let's say, by clients from that region, uh, the offensive OSCE, OS, uh, OS uh, certified ethical hacker is very known. We all know that, and uh, a lot of the rest of them are actually from Jira. Uh, the ones that are implied implies using uh, sense trains. They are very comfortable with that. They, uh, they like it very much. This are the ones that are Okay, now we'll talk about some investigations that we had. So this is a case. Pharma manufacturing company buying prime materials from China through a third party. Multiple deals made before, so it's not this was not the first encounter with the both both companies, so they made several years deals before. This particular deal was discussed to be made using PP, so it's uh, PP is wire transfer very quickly. You don't have cover, cover up after this. LC is more like an escrow type. 
Transfer type confirmed on the phone. Uh, the account chief accountant from, from the partner company is also the agent. Okay, we'll do a TP. Okay, what's next? Uh, the goods were shipped. Uh, but in the meantime, agent, agent sends email to former company saying that he, he thinks he was hacked. The former replies back to the job by Navy or something similar. Goods arrived after 30 days at the port from China. So the former company took the goods and they had it in the deposit. And then uh, they paid, received an invoice from the agent, invoice under another company in Hong Kong. So usually, so this was a exceptional case. Okay, we have another company. Okay, that's good. Seeing that the previous company was acquired. They sent a uh, word document saying justifying the letters only and the sign signature in the end. Okay, yeah, we bought this company, it's okay, all is easy. Okay, the accountant said, okay, sounds good now. Uh, from the company paid the invoice. And after five days, the agent contacts farmer okay, asking when the invoice will be paid. Yeah, the case was 600,000 US dollars. Farmer company suspects that this is an internal job. Accountant and agents are good friends. Farmer company only made payments to LC so far. Personal and work phones were kept for forensics. Laptop was kept for forensics, and all the emails were so not the, the emails because they were using the phone. You have any ideas? What happened? So, the cPanel account of agent's company was compromised and the code was breached. They have the email and password leaked. Hackers search for key terms, payment and invoice, presenting present interest. So, they stayed there three months, just as a proxy, looping through the conversations. When the opportunity was there, he only sent two emails and blocked all the incoming emails. We draw the money from Hong Kong third party on the third day. It's, it was an Nigerian scheme. You will see this very often now. This is uh, really an increasing uh, alert on this type of um, incident. Uh, and it's, it's like the new phrase of Nigeria scam letter, if you know about it. Something like that. But it's more efficient, let's say, because it's hard to uh, discover who is, in, who is sending the email because it's coming from the same email address. Everything was digit. So who to blame here? The pharma because sent the money to another company? No, because it was received an email with an invoice from that specific email account. And the money, well, the money was taken the third day, so nothing there about the money. And also involving the China another company with China, it would be very hard to track the money to make an investigation there. And it's very hard. Investigation number two. Okay, so here we have a serial guy, bank guy, arrived at the country border, laptop contains highly sensitive documents, so because he was a serial in the company. Uh, so he had multiple sales, accounts, financial numbers. The sort of stuff that you can imagine. At the border, the military guys ask for the laptop. You probably shouldn't see that very often. Uh, the laptop had any protections, the RSA token, uh, password, authentication protection, and kind of all that. Uh, and the guy gave all of this to the password, the account, the RSA token, they go to the military. They have guns. And uh, after 40 minutes, the military guys came back with the laptop. When given back to the TV guys, it was not the letter file, it was given, was given to agent errors. So it was not uh, functioning properly. Security was notified about the incident. This investigation we did for engineering, so they had the windows, 
the, the way I have the Windows, the Windows, Windows Spring, User Science Framework. What happened here? Was verified what we did? Was verified access to the VPN? And was the name of the uh, what files uh, were touched, installed, um, check the any uh, hard drive encryption is still working, review all the Windows logs, all the server side logs. We try to see every angle, to find every angle that uh, could lead us to see if something happened in that specific period of time, 40 minutes. Um, had some problem with the FTP because server side didn't have the same uh, time zone as the laptop, for example, had multiple. Uh, multiple servers install the logs from VPN, from the agent, different hardware components. Uh, here, the laptop was, wasn't even opened. So it was a very successful, uh, not for us, but for the company itself, it was a, a good day. Uh, no, nothing from the VPN perspective, no one connected to it, uh, couldn't, couldn't run the RSA, uh, entity was encrypted. The only thing with the agent was that uh, in that day they, they pushed uh, update on all of the all of the workstations. <coughs> Oops, other types of investigation we had: suspicious API network traffic, so financial websites uh, that were reached to trace websites. The users were taking the logs, they were investigating it, um, and trying to see uh, as much as possible from an attacker perspective. From a defensive perspective, from an attack perspective, they are searching for keywords, depending on the amount of search that we have, on the amount of data uh, that we have at our disposal. <coughs> social engineering. We all know how it is. Social engineering. So we have the investigation phase where we gather names, uh, trying to gather emails on the using those scenes, for example, uh, in which the targets and the emails. Sample email, try to see the signature for that, uh, how they are using different companies, and then some emails and um, <coughs> exit putting our tracks within the company or putting our foothold within the company. How come phishing and social engineering can exist? We usually don't see this very often uh, using SMB. Have you used SMB during social engineering? Okay. So SMB is a net of, share, net of file sharing protocol. Regards authentication and design for local networks. Okay, what can we, how can we use it? <coughs> More technical stuff. So using SMB, Windows uses the authentication itself. We don't need to authenticate in accessing the shared on the network. Here's this is incorporation that have that have AD integrated. Uh, you can use inefficient attacks in order to capture AD credentials. You can insert instead of emails in the insert file and uh, try to put, a, put your website there with a listener. Uh, listener that listens for uh, uh, connections, um, uh, SMB connections. And you will get the empty or NMB2, which can later on be used, uh, can be cracked, and you can get uh, accounts. From the network without being in the network. These accounts can be used later on, uh, accessing the VPN maybe, or uh, accessing the OAuth account, the Outlook account. So we, there are many ways. This is the first step towards uh, breaking uh, engagement where you need to have access in the network. So this will help you very much uh, to grab credentials before actually accessing the network. Using the social engineering, instead of giving them a link, okay, click here, put your credentials, okay, this will not even notice that. They have been uh, uh, socialized. Okay. So this is the cracking uh, using the hash cap of that entry in the two. Connect into the VPN auto portal and other applications using data product integration. Other technique, technique uh, using the USD, USB drop, you will create a desktop.in file. Uh, that file we have several attributes and uh, the code from the bottom of the page. Uh, using this USB, if you insert it in another computer, you will get back again the end of the V2. More technical stuff here. User IP, username, hash. So you only throw the USB or insert it in a computer and have uh, the end of the V2, which can be used. Applications, 
Zipper Broadcast, que se envió con los packets. Egress Rules, Block USB Bones, if possible. The middle is in high demand of professionals, that I have a specialized engineer for each technology, domain, and money, trying to point out the security landscape, the upstate of the art technology or tools, they are trying to find anything which is new. Again, it's very hot there. They have a lot of security incidents, sadly. And see, the partner in that region usually implies that the fact that it must go outside. So, remotely, we can do a lot, but not all of them. I don't know if I have time for the discussion. Right? What? <laughs> I have a question about uh, the pharma uh, case. Uh, wouldn't it be a, a idea if the bank account has been changed so that the company uh, calls uh, the supplier and asks uh, this guys? Uh, did you change your uh, account numbers uh, or uh, something like that to double check their, their, uh, the data before sending the money? Because 600,000 uh, US dollars is pretty much. All right. Um, that's, that's part of the procedure that you must have in the company to call and see, okay, we have another account now. What, what will happen next? Uh, but you didn't have this procedure in place. We had only LC so far, so the banks, the bank took care of all of the payments. So now no escrow was in place, they only need to, they, they talk a lot on WhatsApp to very close friends. They just received an email from the same person that we were talking five minutes ago. Okay, change this to the YouTube. Okay, no problem. Send. Uh, yes, you're right. This is the mitigation for this. Having a procedure in place, calling the customer. Okay, are you sure you want to change the... Banking bank account on this invoice. Yes or no? But no. I'm done.